Good morning, everyone. Um, this is Robert Pickering. We're going to just give it a few more minutes uh, to give other folks a chance to log on, and then we'll get started in just a couple minutes. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Robert Pickering. Uh, good morning and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, for sound check purposes, if you could please click the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen, if you can hear me okay, that would be great. Okay, good. It looks like audio is working fine. By way of introduction, my name is Robert Pickering. I'm one of the senior partners here at Pronexus. Joining me today is John Scanlon, who leads our outsourced accounting practice. Before we begin, we do have a few housekeeping items that we would like to address. You'll be muted for the duration of this presentation, so if you have any questions, please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. And we'll answer all questions throughout the session and a recorded version of this webinar will be sent to all participants thereafter. 
For those of you on the call who are not familiar with Pronexus, Pronexus was founded by two big four CPAs from PwC and Deloitte and Touche. The entire leadership team are either CPAs and or former controllers and CFOs. We operate very much like a CPA firm. However, we only perform non-attest services. We have five core service offerings, which include consulting, project work, outsourced accounting services, interim management, and loan staff services. If you'd like to learn more, feel free to visit our website. Today, we are diving into a discussion around QuickBooks and NetSuite. But before we get into all of that, can you help our audience understand a little bit about your background, John, and why you are set up to be our in-house expert on this topic? John, you might be muted. Am I, can, anybody, can everybody hear me? Yep. Okay, let me just start. Uh, so I've been in, involved with small businesses playing several different roles within their finance and accounting departments. Uh, I've been a staff accountant and accounting manager, a controller and CFO for businesses in, in, in various stages. I've been involved in startups, high growth companies, large mature businesses, and businesses that were in distress. But at Pronaxis, I oversee the outsourced accounting of businesses that use all versions of QuickBooks, including online and enterprise, as well as NetSuite. So my department works with clients that already use these platforms, and we provide um, the accounting back office support. We help also help install, implement, and optimize all versions of QuickBooks and NetSuite for first-time clients who are in the search of a new accounting or ERP system. Most of the time when we talk to our clients who are currently using QuickBooks and are anticipating some sort of growth, they are interested in you know, basically increased functionality within their systems. So with QuickBooks, they have an accounting system that has served them well so far because their operation is basically small, uncomplicated, there's little need to integrate all their operations into one big system. But as their business grows, their business becomes more complex and harder to manage and they start to use many outside the system analyses to gather information and to make, to make quick and accurate decisions. So we find, for example, that Excel is often, is often used as a tool to develop many reports and analyses and read of, instead of using the system to, to do so with mean, meaningful real-time data that is connected to everything, sales, op, inventory, operations, procurement, et cetera. When you're growing, this can be a problem. I, mean, I, I also don't want to give the impression that we always steer our clients to a full ERP system like NetSuite. Um, it certainly may not be a fit right now. And, and, and there's always a reason why QuickBooks is one of the top selling cloud-based accounting systems out there. It's intuitive, it's easy to use, accurate, inexpensive. And it has some good functionality, especially for, again, smaller, less complicated businesses. So we, in our practice, we use both QuickBooks and NetSuite for our clients, uh, depending on the situation and, and client, the client's needs. Excellent. Thank you, John. Uh, why don't we dive right in? For starters, what are some of the biggest reasons businesses typically start running QuickBooks and what are the benefits? So I think most companies start out with QuickBooks, as, as I mentioned before, because it's quick to get started and it's, it's extremely inexpensive. Sure, and it, but as those businesses continue to grow, while it might be cheap and quick and easy to get started, but as they continue to grow, what are some of the challenges they face by remaining on QuickBooks? Um, so I would say the number one biggest challenge for companies is uh, reporting that can, that can analyze their business uh, the way they want it to. I, I think the second one is um, you know, digital in-house workflows within the system, but mainly reporting. Um, companies really need to have good reporting to make proactive business decisions. That kind of goes without saying. Um, from a multi-subsidiary and multi-location standpoint and international growth, there, that's another reason. Um, a CRM tool or customer relationship management that is integrated into their accounting systems, integrated HR, 
um, payroll solutions. That's certainly another reason. And then lastly, uh, supply chain management, inventory and supply management, order management. And finally, at the end of the day, you are just tired of having all these really disparate systems. Wow, there's a lot to unpack there, John. Let's roll it back to your very first point that you made, which is the businesses struggle on QuickBooks when it comes to reporting. What issues does QuickBooks present there? So QuickBooks reporting uh, is not very flexible. It's not real easy to customize. Um, you know, they really only have um, very basic uh, segment and class for specific reporting. So that's that's something you use to kind of dice up the business. Um, but it's, it's very vanilla and it's, it's hard to really get something that you actually really, really could use to make quick decisions. So how does that impact a business utilizing QuickBooks? So um, we find a lot of companies spend a lot of time in Excel because they need to download reports in order to make changes and do the customization, customization outside the system that they need. Um, you know, with only uh, one class segment, they're unable to analyze their business in multiple ways. It just, QuickBooks just doesn't do a great job of dicing up the business the way you might want to. So it sounds like there's a couple of issues there. A lot of manual processes, bandaging systems together to get some of that reporting. And secondly, the inability to make real-time decisions with real-time data. Right. Um, so... And you really need the ability to customize because businesses change so rapidly. And when you know, for example, in the state of COVID, businesses needed to make different decisions today than they made yesterday. So uh, they need to be able to have a flexible system with multiple segments, multiple ways to, to slice up the business, uh, customize reports rather than reinventing the wheel each month with Excel. I mean, that's just something we see all the time. Um, you know, data is just downloaded, then you have to do the same thing. You have to alter it in Excel the next month um, with, with NetSuite, something like that. So you really don't have to do that. Yeah, that's definitely a pervasive problem. I've heard from multiple clients that said if they were still running on QuickBooks during COVID, they don't know how they would have done anything. They wouldn't have been able to pivot the way that they did or make the decisions that they had to make. Which brings me to my very next point. How does NetSuite address these specific reporting challenges? So NetSuite does have multiple segments, multiple classes, multiple locations, uh, as well as custom segments for, for those types of things. So when you need to analyze your business in a new way, even somebody without an IT background can create a custom field, a custom segment, a custom classification, put that in a report and see the business's impact in a whole new light. And then save that report so that you don't have to do it over again. For example, as we mentioned, using Excel. And then with some of the other things you had mentioned previously, you know, earlier, which is the flexibility and not having to do all those manual tasks and bandaging together with spreadsheets and so on and so forth. And then finally, that idea of real-time reporting, all of this is addressed within NetSuite? So it definitely is. Uh, real-time reporting, real-time dashboard visibility. Um, the dashboards that come with Sweet Success um, and just Sweet Success is just a way that uh, NetSuite configures or pre-configures certain um, platforms for certain verticals like manufacturing and things like that. So these are already pre-configured with pretty much everything a typical controller or a CFO or an inventory manager or a accounts payable analyst would be interested in seeing right there when you kind of open your instance of NetSuite when you log right in. So you don't have to necessarily run reports, you have dashboards as well as the ability to customize the views on your dashboards and, 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 and the reporting. So it's really a flexible tool. Excellent. Now I wanna to go to another point that you made, which was multi-subsidiary, international growth, uh, the challenges that come with that when a business is running on QuickBooks. If a business did not, if a business did wanna scale internationally or acquire additional businesses or what have you, what challenges would they face on QuickBooks? So uh, QuickBooks isn't designed for multiple legal entities um, or multiple, I mean, it has locations, but multiple legal entities. So you have to have separate instances for everything. What I mean by in instances is a separate uh, subscription and the, the, da the data is housed in a separate, um, you know, a separate company. So, so 
which you know leads to manual consolidation. So if you have to do consolidations, you're not really a whole uh, holistic look at your business when you have multiple subsidiaries or locations. It has, um, it, it has some multiple uh, currency, but it's, it doesn't do a really great job at that. And it doesn't have the ability to report in multiple formats so that when you have international growth or you need to report in GAAP or IFRS uh, or so, uh, you know, to do statutory reporting. And I mean, even if COVID had not happened, there's still a lot going on this year with changes, new accounting regulations, correct? Absolutely. Um, you know, there's been a lot of new regulations from lease accounting, revenue recognition, and so many different reporting standards, in addition to all the stuff that you need for, you know, PPP loans and idle loans and things like that. And just because many of these things were postponed this year, some of the new accounting standards, that does not mean that they're still not forthcoming and will need to be implemented in the future. So this is something that businesses that are running on QuickBooks need to start thinking about if they haven't already done so. On NetSuite, how do they address some of these challenges, especially when it comes to meeting those new accounting regulations? So again, NetSuite has the ability to report multiple legal entities in one platform uh, in multiple reporting formats. So they have integrated currency and translation, automatic, trans, automatic translation, intercompany transactions. So in between the two, all the entities, and it's really built to support growing businesses in one platform so they can see anything, all, see everything all encompassing uh, their business in one system. Great. So let's go back to what you said about QuickBooks. So if you have multiple entities or subsidiaries, then does that mean you have multiple instances of QuickBooks systems running concurrently and they don't necessarily talk to each other? So you have to roll it out into a different spreadsheet. Tell me how that works. Yeah, so, so it can be really time consuming process for a lot of businesses because you need visibility for each separate entity or location. Uh, and the only way to do that in QuickBooks is to have separate instances or separate set setups in QuickBooks. But in that suite, you have one instance and you can see across all the subsidiaries and locations in one place, as opposed to going to pull, you know, each individual instance, the information there, and then consolidation happens in Excel, there, there's that Excel again, um, to see the full picture and make all the different entries between, the, between all the um, different entities. Sounds like a lot of manual labor and the more steps required means the more room for human errors and inefficiency. In terms of NetSuite meeting some of those standards such as GAAP and IFRS or the new lease accounting standards that have changed, how does NetSuite stay up to date with all of those changes and ensure that our customers are doing the same? So um, NetSuite certainly does, but we have a dedicated in-house teams that work specifically on accounting standards. So you can be assured that there is, uh, you know, when there's a new standard like ASC 606 which came out, um, we have the ability to transition from 605 to 606 because we have those in-house experts to help build that into NetSuite. Um, this way we can stay on top of uh, changing regulations as they are rolling out. Excellent. Well, thank you. Now let's, um, let's switch gears to CRM, Customer Relationship Management. As you mentioned before, does QuickBooks have a native CRM tool built within it? No, unfortunately it doesn't. Um, you know, their customer record is very simple and does not provide a lot of value outside the basic information like customer name, address, billing information, credit terms, things like that. Okay, so I can see how that would be an issue because I mean, as we say, and most businesses would say is that your customer is your most valuable asset. So what sort of roadblocks can this present in terms of customer relationship management, the acquisition, retention of customers, as well as visibility across the whole customer life cycle? Uh, so because it doesn't allow for this customer visibility, organizations are either needing to manage this in Excel uh, which is difficult and time consuming, or they have to buy a separate CRM system. And you know, most do not integrate with QuickBooks. Okay, so meaning the people who are managing your customers, whether that be your support team or your marketing team, sometimes it's your sales team, they may not all be working off the same information? Exactly. Um, you want an all encompassing system so that you can keep track of pricing. You have controls in place around what sales people are selling the pricing around those, 
and you know if there's customer specific pricing you can manage those things now even on the marketing side i mean if we're sending out emails those emails should be tailored and cater to each customer's history their interests shopping desires whatever it may be yeah and usually uh, this is this is an add-on uh, to a lot of CRM systems, but NetSuite has the ability to send emails and has a robust marketing and has robust marketing function as well. A lot of things can be done uh, automatically and timed and things like that. Excellent. Why don't you uh, talk a little bit further about NetSuite's CRM capabilities, John? So NetSuite CRM really provides that cradle to grave customer lifecycle. So as you're nurturing those leads or marketing those leads, or you need ROI on your marketing efforts, all that rolls seamlessly out to customers and to your sales team to manage pipeline growth. Uh, and it has that visibility. And all the way through, uh, if you need uh, support for your customers, then NetSuite has built in support function to provide that. And again, all this ties back to the main suite. So everything is getting, every, everyone is getting the same information but also that information can be used for different areas of the business, like marketing, accounting, customer support, HR, what have you. So a single version of the truth, that's certainly important. Okay, great. Well, thank you, John. Let's shift and move into HR and payroll. Can you dive into that a little bit more? You mentioned that that was one of the challenges businesses face when using QuickBooks. What does that mean? So uh, QuickBooks does have a native payroll offering. It has, mul it, it has multiple, but it really lacks the visibility for ident identifying errors you know, prior to the payroll run, for example. And they don't have an HR solution, so a full HR solution that's, again, a separate solution that is needed, which adds to the amount of different systems that are not talking to each other. You, you get the general theme here in adding to manual, manual processes. Certainly, you know, what stands out to me there is that there are errors prior to payroll run, meaning employees could potentially get incorrect checks. Yeah, and, and nothing is uh, worse than paying your employees incorrectly. Never a good day when that happens. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, tough thing. That's one thing you don't want to screw up is somebody's payroll for sure. Does, uh, does NetSuite have an internal payroll and HR solution built into it? And how does that work? I mean, does it create the efficiency that businesses might lack running on QuickBooks? So NetSuite does have full full service payroll offering. Um, so you don't have to worry about payroll compliance. It, it provides a complete variance analysis from period to period. So you can easily identify those errors uh, before they happen. This is a really great tool, especially with a lot of employees. So for example, um, if you have an employee that got paid 50 hours this week, versus 40 hours last week, it's going to come up with a variance analysis so you can look at, the, look at that and determine uh, if that's, you know, and correct it before it happens, as opposed to going through each line item. This is a really neat tool. Uh, there's also effective dating. So some of the challenges uh, around open enroll, enrollment or salary changes or compensation changes, they may happen, to, uh, happen in the future. You know, typically with QuickBooks, you have sticky notes sitting all over your monitor to make those salary changes and things like that. Um, effective dating allows you to set, uh, set it for a future date, as I mentioned before, uh, when you know a change is occurring and uh, again, saves you from errors. Also with the ASAR solution encompasses so much, a, a couple of things uh, is um, time off management, onboarding checklists, um, organizational charts, which can, which can also be a separate system need. Onboarding is really big, especially for a company like us when we need to set up employees with uh, assets and computers and things like that and passwords. And so it has all of that, um, you know, and there's so much more with this solution within NetSuite uh, that we certainly don't have time to cover today, but, um, you know, so maybe in a future session. Great, great. One of my uh, favorite solutions of the NetSuite HR function is our Suite People Performance Management. I think it's so cool that we can tie goals and actual performance progress to the overall suite. I mean, think about it, John, all the times we spent over the years spent doing performance reviews in the past and you're retroactively looking back to see what you did, when you did this or when you did that, when did I meet this goal? It's, it's so cumbersome. It's so time consuming. Uh, that's a great point, Robert. Um, and, and now within your suite, it's visible to everyone across the company as well. 
with role-based permissions, um, you can see all of that. So instead of someone having to run to payroll to ask a question and they can, they can just see it in the system on their own provided they have the, the, the uh, permission. Excellent. So uh, moving on to the supply chain, um, how does QuickBooks lack visibility to the supply chain? I know this is a big topic to unravel here for this presentation today, but perhaps you, maybe you could just touch on that, share the biggest concerns when it comes to supply chain management. So, so some versions of QuickBooks um, have, have, have in inventory management. Uh, but it doesn't really do a great job with that. So um, you typically, if you really want great functionality, you typically have to leverage a partner with QuickBooks, you know, for example, like Fishbowl, uh, which requires you to add additional costs and add additional integrations. You know, it's, this is kind of what we call a tech stack. Again, just more duct taping together a solution as the company grows. That's where we got this phrase, the hairball from. How, where does NetSuite provide visibility that QuickBooks does not when it comes to supply chain or order chain management? So uh, NetSuite has inventory at its core, basically. You know, it provides visibility for safety stock reorder points so you don't have stock outages or you don't upset customers when things run out. It it's just has a more sophisticated functionality. Um, so full visibility full visibility from sales to inventory management role and demand planning, helping you figure out historical trends and help you make suggestions for ordering. So you don't have the expensive merchandise on hand or, um, and you try to manage it as best as possible, as well as the ability to drop ship if necessary. The order management system really helps optimize, optimize the whole order fulfillment process by minimizing shipping costs from the nearest location to the customer who is buying it. It allows for um, in-store pickup or shift from store. Um, so customers really have a positive customer service. Um, it's again, it's just a more sophisticated system with much more of an, um, functionality. Um, and, and this is really a big part of it. NetSuite also has workflows built in the system. Huge difference between NetSuite and QuickBooks. And I'll demonstrate that later, uh, which helps with approvals, the separation of duties, and keeping track as orders as they go through the whole process. Dashboards are created by roles so employees can see their tasks on their dashboard when they log in. So I can go through a couple of examples now if uh, you don't mind. Excellent. Okay, so um, this first dashboard here is um, one for an, account, an AP analyst, so somebody who works in accounts payable. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna go through it, um, the dashboard here. Keep in mind though, though, as you look at this dashboard, it's a dynamic dashboard, meaning anything you click on here is gonna go directly to uh, drill down for reports or further analysis. So as you can see, this is an AP analyst on the left side, top side, uh, top corner are reminders. So when this person logs in, they're gonna have these reminders they are gonna be different every day. So this person looks like they had, um, you know, three expense reports to approve. So someone in their organization is, is putting an expense report and this person has to approve it. They have nine purchase orders to fill. So someone in their organization already uh, entered a purchase order in their role. So maybe it's a purchase order analyst or something like that or clerk. And now this person has to uh, fulfill them. Um, or And this person's also uh, in charge of um, uh, doing vendor return authorizations. As you can see, uh, the tiles there, they're, they're um, you know, AP aging. This person has access to AP aging, AP register, open bills, vendor list. So they can click right on this stuff and it'll go into the reporting. Uh, key performance indicators, uh, very important for this role in all different graphs and things like that. Uh, but again, this is a dynamic dashboard um, for an AP analyst. Um, so it fits their role. If you could go to the next slide. Okay, here's, a, here's another uh, dashboard. So this person is the controller. And um, as they log in, Carol Morgan, um, their dashboard comes right up. So this person has, um, is involved in closing. So they have 11 periods to close. So, you know, QuickBooks or NetSuite has the ability to lock periods so people don't go back. And, and QuickBooks, I think, does as well. Um, so someone in their organization, in this person's staff, uh, enters their own journal entries, but they don't post. So the controller has the opportunity to look at them so they can approve them. So they just click on 
that, that number six there and it'll go right into the list of journal entries so they can approve them and look at them. Um, looks like a couple allocation schedules. So there's some expense allocations that this person needs to, to do um, am amortization entry. Um, in this instance, uh, this controller wants um, visibility to all the bills. So um, they've chosen to uh, pay the bills. So someone must enter, enter the bills and this person, um, somebody approves it and then this person pays them. Also a call out to three inv invoices that are uh, overdue. So, um, and, and again, same tiles uh, are same, same format, but this person can go right into the balance sheet, the trial balance, income statement, budget versus actual, key performance indicators, um, revenue. Um, keep in mind that these um, dashboards are dynamic, as I mentioned, but they all, also can be customized to your business. So uh, you may not want some of this stuff. You may want some different KPIs or different, different links. Um, the dashboards can be created for any role. So um, we have clients with executive dashboards where the, 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 the president just has a dashboard that they can look at very high level information. Um, you have purchasing manager dashboards, inventory manager dashboards, um, accounting manager. So you can, it's really unlimited um, to what you can do uh, with this. So, um, you know, this, this is really this, this piece here, uh, the dashboards, the reporting and the, the internal workflows, those reminders are something that really separates NetSuite uh, apart from, um, from QuickBooks. Thanks, John. I mean, that's the first thing that came into my head right now when you were saying everything that QuickBooks really can't manage well. I just thought, how are you doing this amid COVID coronavirus times? With everything changing and with the challenges along supply chain, suppliers not being able to fulfill orders or you're not able to ship, uh, not even picking up curbside, but now curbside returns as well. There is so much that has been happening and changing during this time. It sounds like it's a lot if you don't have the proper tools and the processes in place. As you have explained, and as we've talked about today, what I have been hearing the overall theme is tech stacking just stacking different systems together, duct taping, bandaging them together as the needs of the organization continue to evolve and change. Can you talk a little bit more about what issues this method has caused the business? You know, how does this impact, for instance, a business's performance, success, growth, scalability? Certainly, uh, you know, so when you have all these separate systems like the CRM, HR and inventory, demand planning, it leaves data in silos. So when you have a, a silo, when you have silo data, it's hard to make real-time proactive decisions because all the data is in separate systems. And, and duplicate ent entry, it, you're, you're managing one place and then entering into QuickBooks is a manual journal entry. So that causes additional reconciliation. Um, it causes a lack of visibility from, from you know, front to back office. It keeps you from making those proactive decisions you need to make to be an agile business, especially in times like today, not to mention all the errors that happen along the way from having different uh, systems and different data and, and moving data back and forth. So I bring this back to, to my final question, John, how does NetSuite solve this issue? So I think one of the themes today we've been talking about is that NetSuite has a unified platform. It has a, a, a unified suite of offerings. You don't have silos of data and summarized data, summarized data coming in. You have details to look, look at so you can drill down from the system, linked orders, everything you need from the front to the back office needs in one place, from your employees to your customers. So basically a full picture of your business so you can make informed decisions. That sounds great. I'm not too biased not to ask. Obviously, as we talked about in the beginning of this session, QuickBooks is quick and easy and cheap to deploy. What are the fears associated with moving to a NetSuite that businesses might typically hold back on, even though they feel they are breaking under all the duct tape? So I think most one of the most common fears that I've heard over the last few years is losing visibility um, to historical data and how much time and effort it will take a business to get up and running in NetSuite. So tell me, 
How would you address those fears, having gone off QuickBooks and have moved to NetSuite yourself? So, uh, as I mentioned, um, you know, just to just to elaborate, some of the biggest fears and how is really, I mean, how involved is the implementation? How difficult is it? Do I have enough staff to handle the day-to-day -day operations and implement this new system at the same time? How to get historical data from QuickBooks to NetSuite? Guidance on the setup of workflows, reporting, and dashboards that are specific to um, you know, my business. You can certainly you know, just call up Oracle and buy NetSuite and have them implement it for you. Just keep in mind though, um, they're, they're not finance and accounting personnel and they probably will not have uh, the experience in your specific um, industry. They're simply technical people. Um, you know, that's why working with a NetSuite part partner is advisable. And again, it doesn't cost more money to work with someone like us as opposed to Oracle directly. In fact, in my experience, it's cheaper overall, and you'll have an engaged partner all the way. Um, you know, for, for NetSuite, we, we can provide, um, you know, we have an exclusive partnership with, with NetSuite, um, and we can provide a number of roles uh, within the process if you're looking to get an ARP. Certainly, we can be, we're the exclusive distributor, so we can flat out sell you the software. Uh, we can also um, be an implement an implement, implementation consultant, so we can help you implement it. Uh, we can be an optimization consultant. Um, so that's some, that's, that. for example, someone we, we work with already has NetSuite and they're not really using it to, the, to their capabilities. So we can come in and optimize it further. We can provide support services. Um, so um, Oracle is a, is a multi-billion dollar company. As you can imagine, it's tough to get them on the phone. You have to submit a case, all that stuff. Um, you can really just call us. Or um, the last thing is you, you, uh, we, you can be, uh, we can be a business process outsourcing partner. Um, so you can get onto NetSuite and we can, we can provide some accounting services on top of that um, and it can work that way. Um, the next slide, uh, Caitlin is, um, oh, so um, we, we also get preferred pricing. Um, we get discounts on software and also um, the implementation so you might be looking at something like 30 to 40% off list price um, if you're working with someone like us. Um, and again, we're not just system and sales uh, people. Um, we find a lot of people when they're going to a new system, they really like to start out fresh and, and, and make it really nice. So we can help you design the chart of accounts. Um, you know, we can help you design internal controls and workflows. Um, you know, we can, you know, design, help you design and optimize those dashboards. We also are not just um, uh, technical and accounting people. We also have experience in um, uh, all different types of industries. So we've held positions um, as, you know, accounting managers, CFOs, controllers. Um, we've run businesses that are, you know, in the food and beverage industry, manufacturing, wholesale distribution. We have a huge non-for-profit profit practice. Um, so we can go above and beyond what, you know, what, 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 what maybe Oracle can provide. We're, we're, we're accounting people and we're finance people, but we haven't, we have experience with NetSuite in addition to, um, you know, operational within these businesses. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Um, so basically, just in summary, there's two ways to work with Pronexus and NetSuite. If you decide to, um, you can purchase the, the, the uh, NetSuite outright from Pronexus because we're the exclusive distributor. You're going to get some di serious discounts between uh, going back to Oracle, or you can become a business process outsourcing partner with us. And uh, there are some, obviously some advantages um, to that uh, situation as well. John, can you just elaborate a little bit further on uh, becoming a business process outsourcing partner? Yeah, so uh, what a lot of people um, uh, do is um, they may want to, um, to uh, there may be a very small business or they're a growing business and they want to, um, they want to use NetSuite, but they really want to pay full price and they need someone to guide them along the way until they're up on their own. So what we have is our own uh, NetSuite uh, platform. So we can put your company on our platform, give you as much access as you need, but we also have access. And at the same time, we can provide accounting type services that go along with that. For example, you might have a, a company that has really good processors, you know, accounts payable people, accounts receivable, but you need 
along with that, you need some, maybe some outsourced controller services to help you along the way. And, and the reason why NetSuite does this is because they know that if you're going to be a growing business and you're going to get really big someday, you're eventually going to uh, have your own instance of NetSuite. Um, so they're looking for, you know, a long-term relationship as we are, as most businesses are. So that's a way that um, uh, we find that smaller businesses can get into NetSuite and also have guidance along the way in a business process outsourcing uh, relationship. So a newer company, a growing business that needs a fully integrated end-to-end -end ERP system can leverage the horsepower of an Oracle NetSuite, but by doing so as a business process outsourcing client through a firm like ourselves, they're actually able to access that ERP software technology at a small fraction of the price they normally would pay, correct? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really um, 80 to 90% discount, something like that. Um, but, you know, you're also getting, um, you know, an accounting and finance partner in your industry to help you along the way. And, you know, someday down the road, you may, it may have grown quite a bit and you really don't need that particular piece of it. Uh, you still love NetSuite. So, you, you know, we, we just, there's a, there's a lot of flexible ways to work with us and to work with NetSuite. Um, so that you can have a um, top of the line ERP system um, as opposed to what you've been using today. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, John. Welcome. Uh, just as a reminder, please enter any questions that you have either in the chat or use the Q&A feature. We also have both of our email addresses on the screen. If you'd like to jot those down, we'll give you a moment to do so and feel free to contact us directly. Um, Caitlin will also be sending a recorded version from today after the session's been completed to all attendees. Looks like we have one attendee with um, a raised hand. I believe it's uh, Mary Coombs. Okay, well, maybe that was a, a technical mishap. I don't see any specific question from Mary. There's no question from her on the Q&A either. So just as a, lastly, as a, you know, we do have some upcoming webinars over the next few months. They're posted here on the slide. If you're interested, please feel free to register. Um, we have the uh, webinar regarding the implementation and maintenance of the new lease accounting standard, ASC 842 which is scheduled for May 18th. Also, uh, a month later on June 22nd, we will be doing a demo of uh, Pronexus's lease accounting software as well. And, and sometime in July, we'll be doing a similar presentation to today uh, where we are focused a little bit more on customer relationship management, CRM for the CFO. That'll be held in July, exact date and time forthcoming. Um, we'll be happy to take any remaining questions at this time. Okay, Caitlin, I don't see any other questions. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think we could uh, we could move to uh, close unless you tell me differently. You are correct. <clears throat> Okay, excellent. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today at our webinar. Thank you to John Scanlon for the insights and knowledge that you were able to impart and share with us. And I uh, hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you.